I'm always so inspired by people who are just wired differently. Like they are just motivated and driven by something more. It's not about the money. It's not about the fame, the wealth, you know, the celebrity or all the good things that come with success. Yeah, those things are great to have, but they are working for immortality. They're working so that when that last chapter is written on the book of their life, People will be talking about them, studying and reading about them for thousands of years to come. They are earning a seat at that table. That is, that, you know, that is so inspiring. And when I think about these people, like, or, or better yet, when I think about this, this imaginary place that, you know, we will go to in the afterlife and you open the door and it doesn't matter what industry or what business you were in. You know, if if you were top of your class, you open the door and let's say you're sports, you get to open the door and you see people like Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, Babe Ruth, you know, really the great sitting around this table, you know, talking it up, laughing, joking and talking about the old times. Or if, it's, if, if, if your thing was business and you open that room up and you see, you know, the Carnegie's or the Rockefeller's or the J.P. Morgan sitting at that table or if it's technology, the Steve Jobs, the Bill Gates, the Zuckerberg sitting at that table. That is, you know, when I, when I see people who have made money, they've made millions and billions of dollars and you know clear as day. You can't even spend this money. You can't spend it in your lifetime. So why are you getting up and you're treating every day like it's your first day? And it's only because they want to make sure they have earned a seat at that table. You know, I read an article recently um, about the, the, Olympi the Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps, right? And Michael Phelps said for five straight years, for five years, Every single day of the week, he was in the water practicing. It, no days off. It wasn't about, I got a headache, I'm tired, you know, I don't feel good today. For five straight years, Michael Phelps was in that water swimming and practicing. Now, really put this in perspective. It's one thing to be in a league where you're competing against the best people in your country. But Michael Phelps being this Olympic athlete, he is competing against swimmers from around the globe. Like, it is not just the USA. He might represent the USA, but he's competing against Canada. He's competing against China, Japan, you know, Russia, Germany, so forth and so on. And for him to be the most medaled um, athlete to ever play in the Olympic Games with 28 medals is amazing. 23 of those medals are gold. It's, it's insane to think that this man was, granted, I'm sure he is naturally gifted, but the amount of work and the dedication to his craft that he put in, he was swimming and he was competing for something more. And now that he's retired, his name will be remembered for all time. Are you working that hard? Are you going at it, you know, really beating on your craft day in and day out to the level that he was? Because if you are, you will earn that seat at the table. I sit and I think about an athlete, we all know Kobe Bryant, and just if I'm completely being honest, I never could really, um, I couldn't appreciate Kobe Bryant in the first half of his career because Kobe Bryant was just so damn arrogant and, and he was like, yo, get out of here. He walked on the court and just thought he owned it. But in the second half of his career, especially when, you know, he really let loose and became that black mamba, I started to get it. I started to understand how, you know, Kobe didn't re he didn't really do much talking, but at the end of the day, he, he demanded so much out of himself, and he also demanded that same level of intensity and commitment from his team, from his teammates. It didn't matter if they thought he was a dick. It didn't matter if the media thought he was a dick. Kobe was playing for something more. He understood that one day, one day, 
my career is going to end, but I want my number, my jersey rather, um, to be lifted up into these rafters. Matter of fact, I want I want number eight jersey and I want number 24 jersey lifted into the rafters because I want a seat at the table with, with the greats who came before me. I think of people like Oscar De La Hoya. You know, Oscar De La Hoya, you, you guys know I love Muhammad Ali, but, but Oscar De La Hoya exemplified what it meant to be a true champion when he was in that ring. You know, what I love about him so much is because when he became champion, it didn't matter. I want to fight the best. Now, people say that all the time. I want to fight the best. But they hide behind their promoters. These fights never get made. It's, it takes years for these super fights to, to, to get made. But Oscar De La Hoya understood. The promoter works for me. And I'm telling you, go out there. Do what you got to do because I want to fight the best. And I just don't want to fight them. But I want to fight them when they are in their prime and I'm in my prime. I want to fight them when the level of competition is so high that whoever comes out as the victor, we, we know that it was no fluke, that both of us went in the, in, into this ring and we were the tops of our class and made the best man win. That you have to respect. And, you know, he wasn't fighting, you know, just for money and he wasn't fighting G trying not to get a loss. He was fighting for something greater. And that's another thing. No matter what you guys are doing with your life, whether it's sports, whether it's business, I don't know. But please understand losses, setbacks, it, it comes with the game. It doesn't define you. So what if you take an L? So what if there's a setback? That, that just builds character and it shows you what you are made of. It shows you, do you have what it takes to really bounce, you know, take it on the chin, get up off that canvas and bounce back and do something greater tomorrow. So don't worry, you know, so especially in sports, we see so many people who they are fighting just not to get that that such and such and zero taken off their record. So what? You take, you, you take an L, you take an L. This is about more. The greatest who've ever done it have taken L's. So please understand your setbacks, your, your, your losses, they are only there to make you better. They only defeat you when you stay down on that canvas. So I gotta ask you guys, what are you working this hard for? Because if it's about the cars, if it's about the money in the bank, and you really putting that time in, I can assure you, you're gonna get that. But if you're working for something more, if you're motivated and driven by something more, like really having your name ring out for all eternity, the cars, the money, the, 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 the fame, the celebrity, that's going to come. That is the cherry on top. That is just the benefit of your hard work. But your name will go and, and, and when you leave this earth, you'll be able to walk in that room and you'll see your name tag sitting at, at, at your place and you'll have that seat at the table. Do me a favor. Make every move a power move. Peace and love, guys. And I'll catch you all on the next video. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, Feel free to share. Peace and love.